All right, so here is part three of the semester review. Um, for this one, it says, for each parabola, find the vertex focus directrix and the axis of symmetry. Um, so this one here, I'm actually gonna do it in the calculator. Let me go ahead and show you how I'm gonna do that. So first off, I'm gonna go and I'm gonna add a graph. Now this time I'm gonna delete the equal sign. I'm gonna pick number six relation. And I'm actually gonna type in the equation just so I see it, parentheses, x minus three, close parentheses squared, equals 16, open parentheses, y plus six, close parentheses, enter, okay? Now you can see the parabola is all there. I'm gonna move this just so I can kinda have it in right there, and that's good right there. Let's move this equation out of the way. Okay, now, first thing it has to do is find the vertex. Well, if you know h comma k, so three comma negative six, but you can actually do that in a calculator. If you do menu, six, eight, then you go to vertices for vertex, click on it, then you go to the graph, you have to put the cursor on the graph. You just click down and the vertex, whoop, I didn't click down. Click down on it and there's the vertex, three comma negative six. For the opening, we can see the parabola is opening up. For the focus, again, menu six, eight, find a word that looks like focus, which is foci. Again, touch the graph and it's gonna actually plot it for you and give you the coordinate. So three comma negative two. Um, directrix is literally directrix, menu six, eight. Oh, let's see, menu six, five, sorry. <laughs> and I'm gonna go touch the graph and let's see what it does. Now I can't actually see it. So let me make sure I click on there, there it is. All right, let's move the graph up a little bit, see if we can see it. Ah, there it is, there's a dashed line. And it says y equals negative 10. Axis symmetry, menu 6, 8. And axis symmetry is number 4. Again, we go and touch the graph. There we go. And it tells us x equals 3. All right, number of side, units on each side of the focus. It's the absolute value of 4p divided by 2. So in this case, the absolute value of 16 divided by two, which is eight. Now, another way you could have done this is uh, you can add the grid menu two, six, three. And you can count from one side to the other. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. From the focus to one side is eight units. Okay, I'm not gonna graph it because you can do that in the calculator to see it. So over here on this one, um, start the calculator over, open up a graph. Let's delete the equal sign, number six relation. Type in the equation. All right, so there's our parabola. Let's kind of move it up a little bit. Yeah, that's good right there. Yeah, let's move this equation over again. Like this equation just gets in my way. Let's put that there. Okay. And vertex, menu six, eight, vertex is number two. Go click on the graph and one negative four. Our opening is to the left. Focus, menu six, eight, focus is number three. Let's click on the graph, negative two, negative four. Directrix, menu six, eight, and this one is five. Click on the graph x equals four, axis symmetry, menu six, eight, axis symmetry is number four, click on the graph, and we can see that y is equal to positive four. Uh, number of units on each side menu, two, six, three, and we have one, two, three, four, five, six, six units. And again, you can graph that on your own, I'm not gonna graph that there. All right, let's go ahead and go over here to this one. So this one, I'm actually gonna have to do some work here. So it says the focus is at five, zero, one, two, three, four, five. I'm gonna label that with an F. Vertex is at three, zero, one, two, three. Um, so I know the vertex is already HK. All I really need to know is P now. What is P equal? 
So if I know the focus is inside the parabola, I'm just drawing a rough sketch. Um, I know it's going to the right, so my gen generic equation is y minus k squared equals 4p x minus h. So in this case, p is the units from the vertex to the focus, which is two units. So we get y minus k is zero squared equals four times two, which is eight, x minus h, which is three. So you can write it like this, or you can also write y squared equals eight, x minus three. That one is up to you how you wanna write it. All right, for number 42, we're gonna graph the focus at negative three, positive one. Then we have the directrix at y equals three, so one, two, three. And if you remember from previous classes, the uh, vertex is in between the directrix and the focus. So my vertex, and that shows me my graph is opening down. So my vertex is at negative three, positive two. And my p-value is actually negative because it's facing down, and it's one unit between the vertex and the focus. So since it's opening up or down, x minus h squared equals 4p, y minus k. So x minus h is negative 3, so when I plug it in, it becomes positive 3. Squared equals 4 times negative 1, which is negative 4. And then y minus k, which is y minus 2. And there's my answer. All right, for 43 and 44, it gives you the vertex form, intercept form, and it wants you to find the equation. All right, so for the vertex form, this is h, k, x, and y. We're going to plug these numbers in so that we can find a. So y is 4 equals a, x is 6, minus h. When we plug in the 2, it's negative 2 squared, plus k, which is going to be minus 3. And I'm going to work this out because I'm not using my calculator. So 4 equals a, 6 minus 2 is 4. 4 equals a times 4 squared. 4 squared is 16, so it becomes 16a minus 3. Let's go ahead and add the 3 to the other side. 4 plus 3 is 7 is equal to 16a. Divide both sides by 16. A equals 7 over 16. So my equation is y equals 7 over 16. X minus h, which is minus 2, squared minus 3. All right, for the next one, uh, my x-intercepts are 10 and 6. So this is p, this is q. This point is x and y. So y equals, so 8 equals a. X is 11 minus 11 minus, And my first root is 10. My second one is six. So eight equals a, 11 minus 10 is one, 11 minus six is five. A times one is a, a times five is five a, so eight equals five a, divide both sides by five. And a is equal to eight fifths. So my equation is y equals eight over five, x minus p, x minus q, so x minus 10, x minus six. And again, p, q could have been either one, that's just your choice. All right, for number 45, convert it to standard form. So for this one, we're going to do the, uh, in the calculator. So we're going to do menu 3, 2. We're going to, oops, sorry, menu 3, 2. We're going to do menu 2, menu 6, sorry. This has been a while. Menu 6 and 1. And it's a quadratic regression, so menu 616. So let's write that there. Oh, let's see purple. So menu 616. Menu 616. So menu 616. Um, don't forget, we use control. And then the braces. So right here, the little closed parentheses. We type in our x values. 1, negative 2, comma, 3. Then on the bottom, we do the same thing, except our y values, negative two, comma, one, comma, six. A is one, B is zero, C is negative three. The R squared just means one, that it is 100% pretty much sure that it is a quadratic function. So one X squared minus three. So I'm just gonna write X, Y equals X squared minus three. All right, on to the next page. All right, so these ones are just graphing it. Uh, once again, here, you could probably just type this into the calculator, um, but I'll work these out by hand. Um, so right here, standard form. This is ax squared plus bx plus c, so this is standard form. 
for your axis symmetry, x equals the opposite of b over 2a. So a is 1, b is 6, and c is 5. So opposite of b, so negative 6 over 2 times 1, which is negative 3. So x equals negative 3. So your vertex, your x value of vertex is negative 3, because that's the axis symmetry. Let me plug it in here. So y equals negative 3 squared plus 6 times negative 3 plus 5. So we have 9 minus 18 plus 5. Uh, I'm just going to verify this in the calculator. I don't want to make a mistake here. So 9 minus 18 plus 5. And I come up with negative 4. All right. So direction, A is positive, so it's opening up. And that's going to be a minimum value. And in terms of my roots, I would have to graph this. So negative 3, negative 4. Uh, I do numbers getting bigger here, so negative 2, negative 1, smaller here, negative 4, negative 5. Um, so I do the 1, 3, 5, 7 trick. 1, 3, 5, 7. My A value was a 1, so if I multiply each one by the 1, they don't change. So I plot my vertex at negative 3, 1, 2, 3, and then 1, 2, 3, 4. And then it's positive, so I always go up. So right 1, up 1. From that point I just made, right 1, up 3. And then right 1, up 5. One, two, three, four, five. And that's good enough there. Make my graph. All right, so the roots are at negative 1, 0. 2, 3, 4, 5, negative 5, 0. And again, you probably could have just typed this into the calculator and got your answers. So for the next one, I'm just going to verify that I can actually do that in the calculator. Um, actually, I'll just verify this one. But know that you can type them in the calculator and get your information just like I did before. So uh, this one's already in standard form, so there's no need to delete the equal sign unless you really want to. So x squared plus 6x plus 5. All right, there's my graph. Uh, again, I just, I'm going to move this equation out of the way. So just hold it until it grabs it, and then move it out of the way. Okay, so let's see. Um, so menu 6, 8. I'm looking for my axis of symmetry first, number 4. And let's go over here, click on it. Let's see if we get it. x equals negative 3. If we want our vertex, menu 6, 8, 2. Negative 3, negative 4. It's opening up, so it's a minimum. My roots, now roots are menu 6, 1. So first one is right here. Negative 1, 0, which we have. And then my second one, menu 6, 1. And there, and we have negative 5, 0. So all these equations can be typed in, and you can get your information just from here. So we already know menu 682 for the vertex, menu 685 for the axis symmetry. Uh, the roots were menu 61. All right, anyways, from here, I'm going to finish up my table real quick. So this was at negative 3, and these were my roots at 0. All right. Um, I'm still going to do these by hand just because that's what I'm going to continue with, what I was doing. So this is vertex form. So for your axis symmetry, x is equal to h. Your vertex is h comma k. So for this one, this is h going to be h, this is going to be k, and this is a. So you have to set that equal to zero to solve it, so x equals 2. That's also the x value of the vertex, so 2 comma positive 1, so 1. So 3, 4, 1, 0. For your direction, a is negative, so that means it's facing down, and therefore you have a maximum. And your roots, we're going to get that from the graph. So again, we have 1, 3, 5, and 7. But your a value is negative 1. So when you multiply each one by negative 1, they're actually going down now. Oh, I put negative. This is negative 3. This is negative 5. And this is negative 7. So vertex is at 2, 1. So I go right 1. Negative 1 tells me to go down 1. From that point, right 1, down 3. 1, 2, 3. And then down 5. And that's all I can fit on the graph. Make my graph the best I can. So my roots are at 1, 0, and 3, 0. So we have uh, 0, 0, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. 
Now this next one here, I'm just going to see if I can just plug it into the graph here and see what my equations are. So two parentheses x plus one and x minus three. All right, there we go. So let's move this out of the way. So this one, uh, like I said, you can easily just do this one by hand, but I'm just gonna see if, how it goes in the calculator. All right, so first thing I want is the axis symmetry, so menu six, eight. Axis symmetry is number four. Let's go and click on it. X equals one. Vertex, menu six, eight, two. Now this one's a little bit different because when I click on it, there's a vertex right there, one comma negative eight. And then when you move off of it, it's gonna disappear. So if you just wanna drag your calculator or your graph so you can see it, and now we can see it's at one negative eight. Direction is going up, so that means it's a minimum. And my roots, uh, menu six one. So here to here, which is gonna be three zero. And then over here, menu six one. Here to here, which is negative one zero. All right, so from here, again, I'm gonna put my vertex in the middle. So two, three, zero, one. We know these are zeros right here. Uh, just to show you, we're gonna do the one, three, five, seven. A is equal to two, so we multiply each one by two. So we have 14, 10, six, and two. So we'll go, let's go to one, negative eight, five, six, seven, eight. I know my roots are at three, zero. And negative one, zero. Now, if I go right one, this one tells me to go up two, so right one, up two. And if I went up six, I would get to that point. And beyond that, the 10 is right here if we wanted to do that one. And so I'm gonna make my graph the best that I can. I missed that, sorry. But there's my graph, and there's my answers. So this one is at, if this is negative eight, these are gonna be negative sixes. And there you go. All right, um, for number 49, it says to write it in standard form. So this one here, um, notice it's squared, so we're gonna do two times, we're gonna write it twice. So I'm gonna keep the two here, I'm gonna foil this out, x times x, x squared, x times negative one, negative x, negative one times x, negative x, negative one times negative one, positive one. Simplify it, two x squared, uh, negative x minus x is negative two x, plus one, plus one. We can only distribute the two to what's in the parentheses. So two x squared minus four x plus two, don't forget your plus one. So y equals two x squared minus four x and two plus one is three. All right, for number 50, it says to factor it and solve it. So I'm gonna do the x method. So first of all, make sure it's in standard form. Gray's common factor. Is it a special case, not a perfect square? So we go to the X method, B at the top, divide by A, and then A times C. And my two numbers that add to negative six, but multiply to eight are gonna be negative two and negative four. So X minus two, X minus four, set each one equal to zero to solve it for your solutions. So X equals two and X equals four. For my next one, um, it's in standard form, no gray's common factor. It is, a, it is a special case, right? Perfect square, perfect square. It's a difference of two squares. So square root of x squared is x. Square root of 16 is four. One positive, one negative. Solution, set each one equal to zero and solve. So x equals negative four and x equals positive four. All right, let's go to the next page. And we're continuing with the factoring. So again, make sure it's in standard form. Look for a greatest common factor. Check if it's a special case. They're not perfect squares. So we go to the X method. So one at the top, divide by A, which is five. A times C is negative 20. So what number two is add to one, but multiply negative 20, that's gonna be five and four and we'll make that negative four. So five divided by five is one, so that's gonna be x plus one. The five does not divide or simplify with negative four, so we bring the five in front of the x, so that's gonna be five x minus four. Set each one equal to zero. 
and solve. So subtract 1, x equals negative 1. Add 4, divide by 5, x equals 4 fifths. Second one, our 53, is in standard form. There is actually a greatest common factor. They're both divisible by 6. So x squared minus 4. This is a difference of two squares. x plus 2, x minus 2. Again, you can only solve or set it equal to 0 if it has an x. So x plus 2 can be set equal to 0 as well as x minus 2. When you solve that, x equals 2, negative 2, x equals 2, positive 2. All right, for the 54, standard form, GCF, they're all divisible by 3. x squared minus 6x plus 9. Um, it is a special case. This is a perfect square. This is a perfect square. So we have 3, and this is going to be x3 minus sine squared. Um, the only one that actually has an x is this, so we're gonna, it's squared, so x minus 3 equals 0. Add the 3, x is equal to 3. All right, moving on. Uh, simplify these expressions. So this is where I do that upside-down division bar, and I'm pretty much using a factor tree just in a line. So we take 180. Smallest prime goes into 180 is 2, 90 times. 2 goes into 90, 45 times. The smallest prime that I know goes in there, you can use 3 which is 15, 3 goes into 15 five times, and then 5 goes into itself once. So I'm looking for pairs. I see a pair of 2s and a pair of 3s, so that's going to go outside the radical. And what I didn't circle is the 5 and the 1, so 5 times 1 goes back in, which is 5. On the outside, we have 2 times 3, which is 6, radical 5 as our simplified radical. All right, for number 56, um, we cannot have a radical in the denominator. So when it's by itself, we rationalize it just by multiplying by the square root on the bottom. So in this case, the square root of 2 multiplied to the top and the bottom. 3 times the square root of 2 is 3 square root of 2. The square root of 2 times the square root of 2 is the square root of 4, and the square root of 4 is 2. And here we cannot reduce 3 and 2, and these 2s are not the same. This is a radical. This is not a radical, so that's my final answer. <coughs> Um, for the next one, it has a number added or subtracted to the radical, so you're going to multiply by the conjugate, which is pretty much you just flipping the sign. So 5 minus radical 3 becomes 5 plus radical 3. Uh, on the top, we distribute. 3 times 5 is 15. 3 times radical 3 is 3 radical 3. On the bottom, 5 times 5 is 25. 5 times radical 3 is positive 5 radical 3. Negative radical 3 times 5 is negative 5 radical 3. And negative square root of 3 times positive square root of 3 is square root of 9. Now, on the top, we can't combine them because they're unlike terms. We have 15 plus 3 radical 3. On the bottom, we have 25. 5 square root of 3 minus 5 square root of 3 counts as 0. Minus the square root of 9 is 3. So then we have 15 plus 3 square root of 3 over 25 minus 3 is 22. Um, we do need to verify that we cannot simplify further. So we look at 15, we look at 3, and we look at 22. Those are not all divisible by something, so this is my final answer. All three terms to be simplified must have something that factors into all of them. All right, on to 58. So here it just says solve by using square roots. So we just do PIMDAS backwards. So first we look for addition or subtraction, which we have 75. So we're going to subtract that from both sides. So we have 3x squared equals negative 75. We have multiplication division, so we're dividing by 3. x squared equals negative 25. To get rid of a square, we take the square root. Don't forget your plus or minus. So first off, that negative becomes an i, and then the square root of 25 is 5. So x equals plus or minus 5i. All right, for the next problem, uh, this is a little bit longer here. Uh, let's see this. So what we're going to do first, addition or subtraction. So I have a plus 20, so we're going to subtract 20 from both sides. 5, parentheses, x minus 4 squared equals 125. Multiply, divide, so we're going to divide by 5. So x minus 4 squared. Oops, sorry, running out of ink there. x minus 4 squared equals, let's see, 25. We take the square root to get rid of the square. Don't forget your plus or minus. 
So x minus 4 equals plus or minus 5. And we're going to add the 4 to the other side. Be careful, you don't add the 4 to the 5 yet. The reason why is because it's a plus minus 5. So we're going to work this out individually. x equals 4 plus 5. x equals 4 minus 5. 4 plus 5 is 9. 4 minus 5 is negative 1. So those are your two solutions. All right, on to number 60. So for number 60, it says to find the... Uh, C value, right, is the trinomial and then a binomial. So if you've already forgotten the formula, here it is. It is C equals B divided by 2 in parentheses squared. So you do need to know that formula. All right, so for the first one, our C value is 7. So we do 7 divided by 2 squared. So that's going to be, uh, whenever it's a fraction, I keep it as a fraction. So 7 squared is 49. 2 squared is 4. So my perfect square trinomial is x squared plus 7x plus 49 over 4. To get my binomial, we square root the x squared, which get x. We square root the uh, 49 over 4, which gives us 7 halves. And we use the middle symbol, which is plus parentheses squared. And then for the next one, uh, same process. My b value is negative 8. So negative 8 divided by 2 squared which is negative four, negative four squared is 16. So we have x squared minus eight x plus 16, square root, square root, parentheses squared, and use the middle symbol, minus. All right, this one wants us to solve the quadratic equation by completing the square. Okay, so first thing we wanna do, uh, make sure if a is not one, we divide by it. If it is, then we move the c value over. Then we're going to complete the square, so it's going to be x squared minus 2x plus blank equals 2 plus blank. We find our perfect c value, so b divided by 2 squared, negative 1 squared is 1. We factor the left using the shortcut, just like up here. So the square root, the square root, parentheses squared, use the middle symbol. And then on the right side, we combine 2 plus 1 is 3. Now from here we solve. To get rid of a square, we take the square root. Don't forget your plus minus. x minus 1 equals plus or minus the square root of 3. We cannot simplify the square root of 3. That is a prime number. So we add the 1 to the other side. x equals 1 plus or minus the square root of 3. And there's your answer. Okay, for the next one, same process. Um, a is 1, so we're going to move the c value over by subtracting the 4. Complete the square, so x squared plus 6x plus blank equals negative 4 plus blank. My perfect c value is c equals 6 divided by 2 squared, which is 3 squared, which is 9. Square root, middle symbol square root, squared in parentheses, negative 4 plus 9 is 5. To get rid of the square, square root, don't forget your plus or minus. All right, to isolate the x, we subtract 3 from both sides. So x equals negative 3 plus or minus the square root of 5. Now you'll notice I did not simplify the square root of 5 because 5 is a prime number and I cannot do anything further than that. All right, for number 63, um, first off, I notice my a value is not 1. So we have to divide by that a value. Then we get x squared plus 4x minus 1 is equal to 0. Let's move the c value over by adding it over. So x squared plus 4x plus blank equals 1 plus blank. My perfect c value is going to be 4 divided by 2 squared, which is 2 squared, which is 4. So x plus 2 squared, when you simplify that or factor it, 1 plus 4 again is 5. To get rid of the square, we take the square root. Don't forget to put plus or minus. So x plus 2 equals plus or minus the square root of 5. And we subtract the 2 from both sides. And we get x equals negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 5. All right, we're down to the last page, I believe. So let me do this last one here. Um, first off, when I'm looking at this right here, uh, number 64 through 68, we did not do, so we're going to omit this because we did not cover it this nine weeks. So this, we're going to omit this. 
and omit this. All right, and then we're gonna come down to these problems right here, starting at 69 through the end. Okay, so for number 69, um, this one here, we're just gonna combine like terms. Uh, oh, but I noticed this power of i's, right? So we talked about this before. Um, i is i, uh, i squared is negative one, i cubed is negative i, and i to the fourth is positive one. Okay, um, that's really useful for like 73 and 74. And uh, let's go, go ahead and continue. Um, so for 69, there's a minus sign in between. So we're just combining like terms. Um, so I'm gonna drop the parentheses. So four plus five i, distribute this negative one. So negative one times two is negative two. Negative one times negative six is positive six i. So from here, I can combine my real terms first. So four minus two is two. For my imaginaries, five i plus six i is 11i, and we're done. For the next one, we have a plus sign, so we can just drop the parentheses. Don't have to worry about distributing. Um, combine your real first. 3 plus 6 is 9. 4i minus 4i is gone, so our answer is just 9. Um, for 71, this one, we have to multiply it, so we're going to distribute. 4 times 5 is 20. 4 times negative 6 is negative 24i. 3i times 5 is 15i. 3i times negative 6 is negative 15i squared. Now we said that i squared is negative 1. So 20 minus 24 plus 15 is going to be negative 9i. And this becomes negative 18 times negative 1, which becomes positive 18. We can combine 20 and 18, which becomes 38 minus 9i. Now, to ensure there are no mistakes, there is actually one thing you can do in your calculator to help with this. Um, so in the calculator, so if I was doing this one and I wanted to verify that I'm doing right, I'm actually going to type it in the calculator. So let me show you how you could do this. Um, we're going to start with parentheses, 4 plus 3. Now, uh, I always say you can't spell pi without the i, so if you look on your calculator, there's a little tiny pi symbol right at the bottom left right here. So I press pi, and inside there is the actual i. Close parentheses. Then we have 5 minus 6i. And then again, we go to pi, get the i. Close parentheses, and it actually works it out for us, and we're going to verify it. 38 minus 9i. Okay, So you can verify it in the calculator. You could have done these as well, but like I said, I'm just showing you here with this one. Um, this one, number 72, I am going to work it out, but let me just type it in so you can kind of see it. It should be 10i. We're just going to verify this is right. All right, so 5i times 6 is 30i. 5i times 4i squared is positive 20i cubed. We know that i cubed is negative i, so 30i minus 20i. So it becomes positive 20i, which is 10i. And if we look at our calculator just to verify it, it is 10i. Okay. All right, i to the 32nd power, so that's where I'm going to use the... Uh, I, and then raise it to the 32nd power, we get 1. And then I to the 43rd power, and we get negative I. All right. Down to these last problems here. Uh, 75, while marching, while marching, a drum major tosses a baton into the air and catches it. The height, h, and feet of the baton t seconds after it's thrown can be modeled by this function. Find the maximum height of the baton. So hopefully you recall previously that the maximum height is actually the y value of the vertex. So I'm gonna go ahead and type this into my graphing calculator. So we have negative 16 x squared uh, plus 32 x plus six. Now the cool thing about the function I showed you before is uh, when you do menu six eight and you do number two for the vertex, when you click it, it'll actually show it to you. You don't have to scroll up there to find it. So right there, 1, 22. So my vertex is 1, 22. So the max height is this y value right here. So that's going to be 22 feet. 
All right. Um, it says the drum major catches the baton when it is four feet above the ground. How long is the baton in the air? Okay. So for this one here, um, it's a little bit different. I'm going to type in tab and I'm going to type y equals four. And that gives me a horizontal line. As you can see, it crosses through the graph at two points. Now, I'm going to give you the intersections of both of them. How do you find the intersection? Menu 6, 4. So we start from the left and then move it to the first intersection. And the problem with this answer right here, right off the bat, hopefully you see it, the x value is negative. So this question is talking about uh, how long is the baton in the air? Well, negative is not going to be a possible answer, so we do a menu 6, 4. When we find the second root, that's probably going to be the time. And here we can see it's 2.06 seconds. All right, on to number 76. Uh, the function y equals negative 0.03, parentheses x minus 14 squared plus 6, models a jump of a red kangaroo where x is a horizontal distance in feet, and y is a corresponding height in feet. Uh, what is the vertex? So this one, again, you type in the calculator. I'm going to just use vertex form, what we know from it. So we know that this is h when it's the opposite, and this is k. So 14 comma 6. What is a kangaroo's maximum height? We know that the y value is the max height, so that's going to be 6 feet. And how long is a kangaroo's jump? Well, if he starts here and he lands here. So if we know the vertex is 14, 6, we know this 14 splits the graph in half. So this is 14 and this is 14. So the total distance of the jump would be 28 feet. All right. Last thing, just make sure you look at your old test reviews to familiarize yourself with previous concepts from the semesters. From the semesters.